Well, good morning. My name is Tom Steffen, and today we're going to look into the secretive life of barn owls. We're going to learn a lot about the biology and nesting behavior of barn owls. This is a 12-part series, one per month, and uh, so we're going to go through the year, and you're going to get the education that you've been looking for on barn owls. But first, if we were to hire a conventional pest control company and they were to come out and put out traps, they would catch five to six rodents and if they charged you like they charged me, it came to about $350 for a one-time visit. But what if I said to you that I could hire a couple that would come here and never leave and catch up to 2,000 rodents a year for about the same price? They would stay here for the life of the barn owl nest box that they're living in and they would kill as many as 2,000 rodents per year for the life of the box, which is about 15 years. So that's about 30,000 rodents for $350. That is a great deal. It's the greatest rodent control method on the planet. There's three methods. There's traps, poisons, and barn owls. If you were to kill all the rodents on your property, how long would it be until new rodents invaded from the neighboring properties? It's what I call the swatting flies outside analogy. It's just a lesson in futility, as you can't trap the rodents on the neighboring properties. Then there's bait or poison, which is referred to as rodenticides. First, not all the rats eat the poison. Of those that do, only about 25% or so actually die. Rodents reproduce so fast that they take that mortality in stride, reproducing right past all that. To make matters worse, the dying rodents are easily caught and consumed by wildlife, especially barn owls, making them sick or sometimes killing the owls. When fed to small barn owl chicks, 100% of the chicks die. So after the barn owl's parents pass on, there is no recruitment to continue the line, leaving the property owners with no protection at all. Property owners call me all the time, especially HOAs, telling me they have a terrible rat problem. I make the comment, oh, you use rodenticides. All of them has agreed, and most ask how I knew, and I said that you said you had a terrible rat problem. That's how I know. Bait stations make the rodent problem worse. Plus, it's a hazard to people and pets, so do the world a favor, don't use it. In this 12-part series, we're going to be looking into the world of the barn owl. We're going to be learning about the behavior as it comes each month. Right now it's November and it's the off-season. It's a great time of year to do any maintenance on the boxes. But if you're using my design, uh, there's very little, if ever, any maintenance needed. So there's no use to clean out the barn owl boxes if you're using my design. And, and it's a rather gross job anyhow. In the last 25 years, it has been my distinct pleasure to install about 35,000 barn owl nest boxes, almost all of them in Southern California. The material selected to use in the construction of barn owl nesting boxes is very important. To be avoided is particle board, metal, and especially plastic. There are nest boxes made totally of plastic. I am a falconer. I was lamenting that my falcon's feet were tender and sore because it kept flying off its perch. My mentor asks, how would you like to be stand on an inferior perch all day? The short answer is, I wouldn't. Have you been inside an all-plastic porta potty on a hot summer day? The plastic fumes are life-threatening to something as sensitive as a bird. So November is the off-season. The owls are mostly inactive as far as the breeding is concerned. Juvenile mortality is continuing, which started the day they hatched. Not until late December through March, depending on how far north you live, Will the owls be looking for a home and hopefully taking up residence in your owl box? Some species of owls migrate at this time of year. Juvenile barn owls wander around usually, but nothing of a strong instinctual behavior like migration. In these wanderings, they are hopeful in finding somewhere with a good rodent population with no other owls, especially bossy adult barn owls, there to run them off. If they can find an area such as this, with some place to hide from their enemies in the daytime, namely crows, and to a lesser degree hawks, then they may just beat the odds and see their first birthday come spring. This is called roosting cover. Roosting means to sleep. When hunting, barn owls are selective about what prey they consume. Rodents comprise over 90% of the prey species they kill. 
The rest are insects, some amphibians, a reptile, and a rare bird or two. If you want to research barn owls or any other native bird, I recommend the Cornell University of Ornithology's website. They have all the reliable information about barn owls, what they eat, what they look like, where they live, what their range is, etc. If you have a question to ask me, I invite you to email me at the address here or on the phone number on my website. Watch for the December video on barn owls coming soon.